It's in your zone. Let him rip. Runners lead off first and second. Winning run at second. That one's hit deep to right field. This will be another walk off. Reed Brainiac, a three run walk off home run here in the bottom of the ninth inning. And the Phillies have won back to back ball games as they win it here in the ninth three to nothing. They're waiting for him at home plate, and this one's going to feel good. Celebration here at Citizens Bank Park is the kind of celebration you can get used to on a daily basis. The Phils hope it's three straight celebrations. Today it is game three of the series against the San Diego Padres. Hi everybody, I'm Tom McCarthy joined by Jamie Moyer. Phillies have won back-to-back games. They're trying to win three straight for the first time in nearly a month. And last night, a great celebration and a great scene in a scoreless game. And Reed Brignac, for the second time, was the hero. He did supply the heroics last night. And we're starting to see some commonality here with, with Reed Brignac. Again, go back several weeks against the, weeks ago against the Mets, where in extra innings in the 14th inning, he hit a clutch base hit to give the Phillies a win in that series against the Mets. And again, this is what the Phillies are looking for, somebody to come off the bench and play this role, uh, whether it be a utility guy, but when he gets the opportunity to pick up the slack. And here last night, we saw him in a great hitter's count, 2-0 count, got a fastball right down the middle and drove it out of the ballpark to really give the Phillies a big lift. And Cole Hamels, after a great outing, another big lift and allowed this Phillies team that has now won two games in a row to continue to create that momentum to go forward. Well, and you look at uh, Brignac's numbers. He was a second-round pick by the Tampa Bay Rays back in 2004. This is a role that he has become used to, first with the Rays and now here with the Phillies, even last year with the New York Yankees. So we'll see if he has that same ability today coming off the bench. Now, the other storyline in this series, the Phillies starting pitchers, both starting pitchers, have been very effective. A.J. Burnett and Cole Hamels have both put forward two great outings back-to-back. You see here the numbers that they've been able to create, 15 innings for both of them, eight hits, two earned runs, three walks, 14 strikeouts. This is phenomenal, and this is what you're looking for a starting rotation to provide you during the course of the season. Unfortunately, it's been two and a half months into the season, (laughs) but it's now starting, and this is what they need to do. This is what they need to build off of, and hopefully today Kyle Kendrick can follow their lead and really help propel the Phillies in a positive direction from taking them out of this series against the Padres and into the next series against the Chicago Cubs. Well, Kyle certainly needs it. He comes into this ballgame with a record of 1-6, and and he's looking for some positive mojo against the Padres here this afternoon. It'll be the 13th start of the season for Kendrick. Meanwhile, Stoltz will be making his 14th start of the year. Well, a little dancing, a little singing, a little celebration here at the ballpark the last two days. When we return, we'll see if the celebration will continue for three straight. Lineups and first pitch when we come back. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. By Citizens Bank, introducing one deposit checking. Keeping things simple is helping you bank better. Buy Toyota. Where will Toyota take you? Visit buyatoyota.com to find out. Toyota, let's go places. And buy Independence Blue Cross, the most preferred health plan in the region. Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless.
it's clear for the moment. There are some storms, though, in the area, but we're going to get this ball game underway. There's the horn in case Murph can't find his way back toward uh, the press box. Padres and the Phils wrap up this three game series. And this kind of really this kind of uh, weather for the last several days here in the Delaware Valley. Uh, so we'll give it a go. The Phillies are waiting to take the field. The umpires have taken the lineup cards. Kyle Kendrick is ready to get this start underway. And the Phils are looking to win three consecutive ball games. Let's take a look at the Padres starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Leading it off in right field, Will Venable. Everett Cabrera, the shortstop, that's second. Seth Smith hits third, followed by Chase Headley and Yonder Alonso. Cameron Mabins in center field, he'll bat sixth. Yasmani Grandal, the catcher, hits seventh. Alexi Amarista will start at second base, he'll bat eighth. At batting ninth and pitching is Eric Stoltz, and they'll face Phillies right hander Kyle Kendrick. Well, Kyle's record tells a whole lot of the story. One in six with an ERA of 4.30. He just hasn't had that consistent run that we've grown used to at times for Kyle Kendrick. Yeah, Kyle, you know, again, he's a very competitive pitcher, but I think if Kyle can figure out, we've talked about this many times, figure out a way to get through the first and second innings, he usually finds his way. But sometimes in that first and second inning, he puts himself behind the eight ball and with some of the lack of support that he's had from the offensive side, it's 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 st stood out and and been a big hurdle for Kyle. Let's well, see what he's done against the Padres. He does have a better than 500 record, an ERA of 4.44. But as we talked about the last couple of days, if he could take what AJ Burnett did and what Cole Hamels did, he might find himself having a successful day here this afternoon. Yeah, if, if he can build off of that energy, uh, and you see here in his first inning. He's given up 13 runs with a 382 batting average against him. And for the rest of the game, he's given up 24 runs and a 239 batting average against him. And the other part of it, too, is left handed hitters are hitting 336 against Kyle Kendrick, 39 for 116. So, again, he needs to figure out some of these things. And the other part of that, he's walked 15 left handed hitters and struck out only 19 of those left handed hitters. And he knows he's going to face a lot of left handed hitters. So, with his arsenal, he has to figure out a way to be aggressive to get these guys out. All right, as he finishes up his warm-up tosses, let's take a look at today's keys to the game brought to you by Nissan. Well, my first key to the, to the game today is uh, make uh, Eric Stoltz throw strikes. He's the kind of guy that will utilize the ball off the plate, get you to chase pitches. Make him throw the ball over the plate. And the other one is to continue good defense behind Kyle Kendrick. He is a ground ball pitcher, and he needs to have that support defensively. All right, we're ready to go. Kyle Kendrick will face Will Venable, one of the first lefties of the day. And Venable shows, but takes a strike. And we're underway. The count is no balls in one strike. Venable hitting 210 with a couple home runs and 11 RBIs. He is two for five in the series. He has started one game. He's come off the bench another game. Just off the inside corner, one ball and one strike. That is the pitch that he's going to try to get here this afternoon. Whether he runs it deeper off the hip of the left-hander or or not, that remains to be seen. Change up outside, two and one. One, well, I think, also where Kyle has gotten hurt this year is he's elevated some of his sinkers and and he's left them in the middle part of the plate and they've been hit rather hard. Call Venable overall with two home runs and 11 RBIs has uh, no hits in three career at bats against Kyle Kendrick. He was voted the MVP of the Padres a season ago. He had a very good year. Inside, that was a cutter, and it's three and one. I think sometimes, too, where Kyle becomes very effective is his tempo when he gets the ball and throws it. And I think he, if he can establish that here early, early on, I think he'll be fine. There's a line drive to right field and played on one hop by Marlon Bird. So Venable's aboard with a leadoff single. Now this year's a little different story for Venable compared to last year, but he is a threat to run. So you got to keep an eye on him. And the Phillies have done a better job recently keeping an eye on the base runners, which has given Ruiz or Nieves more of an opportunity to throw those base runners out. And you've got to give your catcher a chance to. To uh, receive the ball uh, before that guy is halfway to three quarters of the way down to second base. Everett Cabrera is the batter. The Phillies play the infield at double play depth. 
First pitch is outside and low. One and zero. All right, we've seen the A base now uh, hold the ball a couple of times on pitches. Uh, is he not on the same page? I think as the umpire. Or is he just trying to yeah, give I, Kyle some? Yeah, I pitches? think he's trying to give the umpire a good look at what Kyle's throwing, and he may it may be you know questionable. He's thinking maybe that some of those pitches are strikes. Home plate umpire is Todd Tishner today. Clint Fagan's at first. Tim Timmons at second. And Tim Welke's the crew chief. We'll keep an eye on Tim Welke today because it'll be his decision as to whether we're going to put the tarp on the field at any point. One ball and one strike. Off the hands, out of play, one and two. Cabrera has started both games now. This is the third straight game. He's 0 for 7. He has struck out twice. He's walked one time. He's also one of those guys that was having a good year last year at the, during the first half. But this year, a little different story, hitting just 226. Curve ball served into left. And that'll be back to back hits given up by Kendrick. And then I'll put two runners on with nobody out. Seth Smith is coming up. Now Smith is probably the most dangerous hitter in this lineup. For the San Diego Padres. Not only with his overall numbers but also his numbers against Kyle Kendrick. Well what Kyle has to realize here is he needs to. Work the bottom of the zone and try to get himself a ground ball. Both of the hits he's given up were in the air. One to right field one to left field. He's the guy that needs to keep the ball down and really try to induce the ground ball. Let his defense play behind him. Well, they're set up for two once again. Outside, starting off with the changeup, but it's one and zero. Oh. Chopper right side. That could be two. Utley to second for one and over to first, not in time. Rollins just didn't have a whole lot on it with the base runner Cabrera bearing down on him. Four six on the putout. Seth Smith does not run well, but that ball wasn't hit all that hard. And Ryan Sandberg is going to come out to talk to the first base umpire, Clint Fagan. Oh, and you see there with the double play, Jimmy didn't really get a chance to uh, get his feet set. He, he, you know, he really wasn't able to step into that throw, so he couldn't get a lot on that ball first base. Well, Sandberg went out, but was told that that uh, that call was the right call by Clint Fagan. So he walks back to the dugout. But again, it is double play situation for the Phillies here in the first. Well, again, a ground ball here is is really really important. This is a, a you know for me, this is a big inning for Kyle, and I'm and I'm sure for Kyle it's a big inning for him. He he knows that he has struggled in the first inning. He knows if he can get a ground ball right here, his chances of getting a double play are really good. Headley doesn't run that well, even though he's hitting from the left side. Hitting just 199 on the year, and he takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. And that's the pitch I'm referring to down there. If Kyle can stay down there with his sinker and his changeup. I think he can be very effective today. Missed inside, one and one. Well, we mentioned that the Padres are not very good with runners in scoring position. It's been very, it's been a very big problem for them this year. And they've got a runner over at third with less than two outs. Change up outside, two and one. That was a good change up there. He had him way out front and the fastball count. And it's even two at two. 
again you see the effectiveness when that ball is down and it runs even sometimes off the plate or through the bottom of the strike zone but when he elevates like he did with Venable for that first hit and uh, the, you know the second hit with Cabrera the breaking ball that stayed up a little bit you know, they can get the ball in the air and drive it out of the infield. And a line drive base hit it to right field that one's going to the warning track one run is in Smith's on his way to third Hoffman will wave him home Bird had a little trouble with it at least throw to the plate is not in time and the Aves can't make the throw to third it's going to be a two run double for Chase Headley and the Padres take a two nothing lead. Well, it's that pitch that we talked about it's just been a. Uh, it's been a problem for Kyle. Well, here he looks like he tries to, to work a sinker back, and it comes on the inner third of the plate. That ball down and in. A lot of left handed hitters handle that ball quite well. Well, there's been a couple of times in this inning where the Phillies could have had Seth Smith once at first and there at the plate. They do charge an error to Marlon Bird. That allows the runner to go to third. There's Yonder Alonso and a change up swung out and missed. It's 0 and 1. Actually, it looks like it's going to be one RBI, and the error is going to allow Seth Smith to score. So Headley does not get two ribbies. He does get the double. Oh, and two. You know, and a guy like Kyle Kendrick too, he really relies on quick contact. You know, getting contact early. The more these hitters see the pitches he throws, the more they can adjust. So it behooves him to get guys out early in the count. Well, he had Alonzo off balance with the first changeup he threw, and he just kept on throwing changeups. So there are two outs. Here again, you see another good changeup, back to back to back changeups. And Alonzo never really made an adjustment to the changeup, and he just kept throwing it and located it well. That was an excellent pitch right there. That location was perfect for Kendrick. And the difference is he's ahead in the count versus be even or behind in the count. Oh, well, now two away. Here's Cameron Maven. Maven's one for three so far in the series. The one hit was a double. Leads off third. Twenty two pitches for Kyle here in the first. Ten balls, twelve strikes. At the green light, and he pops it up. John Mayberry, the first baseman, comes charging down and makes the catch, and the side is retired. However, the Padres scored two runs. I believe they're going to say that one of those runs is unearned. We'll go to the bottom of the first. We'll check on that. It's 2 nothing Padres on top.
Phillies nothing. Let's take a look at the Padres or Phillies starting lineup. Excuse me. It's brought to you by Xfinity. Your home for the most live sports. Leading it off at center, Ben Revere. Jimmy Rollins bats second, then Chase Utley and Marlon Byrd. John Mayberry's over at first base. He'll bat fifth. Dominic Brown sixth. And the bottom third of Nieves, Hernandez, and Kyle Kendrick. And they'll face Padres left-hander Eric Stoltz. You want to talk about a guy that's been roughed up in recent starts. His number is two and seven. An ERA of 5.68. His walks, hits per innings pitched, just not very good. Not very good. And you, know, you look at batting average against, it's not very good. You know, 321, left-handers are hitting for a high average. Right-handers are hitting for a high average. 13 home runs allowed. Um, it's, it looks like it's been a struggle. But he's, you know, he's got not overpowering stuff, but he's got three pitches. And he doesn't walk many people, but it's a matter of forcing him to throw the ball on the plate. Well, he's now 34 years old. He's from Argos, Indiana. He's allowed 10 earned runs in his last eight and a third. So let's see if the Phillies can get these two runs back here in the bottom of the first. And it's one ball and one strike to Ben Revere. Revere is three for seven in the series so far with a run scored one stolen base to give him 18 on the year. That one's pulled and it's base hit down the right field line Revere will get at least two out of this one. Every ball to the outfield is dying before it gets to the scoreboard. That's the fourth double of the season for Ben Revere. Good way to start the bottom of the first. Here you see just a, a, another fastball. You saw all fastballs. This at bat. It's inner third of the plate. He pulls it down the line. Just past Delonzo and uh, legs out a double. So he's in scoring position for Rollins. Rollins has hit it six straight games. 2,232 career hits. Two away from tying Mike Schmidt. Three away from establishing a brand new mark. Rollins is three for eight lifetime against Stoltz. It's one ball and one strike. <laughs> well, Stoltz does rely on control and command of the strike zone. Pitch right there is very important to him against right handed batters. That one's pushed back toward the middle and a base hit it to center field. Revere was looking back. He's on his way home. There will not be a throw, and Rollins has an RBI single. It's a 2 1 ball game, and Rollins is now one hit away from tying Mike Schmidt's franchise record, and the Phils have cut the deficit to one. Well, he's closing fast. We kind of thought he would. You see, a, actually, a pretty good pitch down and away. Stoltz right now is fastball change him. Jimmy stays right with it, hits the ball back through the middle, and then looks over his right shoulder and scores easily. I think he wondered if Cabrera had come up with it or not. So Rollins is at first. Phillies have scored a run. Rollins is hit in seven straight. Now Chase Utley's the batter. Padres set up to try to turn two with Utley at the plate. Chase has two hits in the series so far. His average at 314. He's hit over 300 in each month so far. He's right at the 300 mark here in the month of June. And he lifts it foul toward the Hall of Fame club. Down and 
away. One ball and two strikes. You know, a pitcher like Stoltz, he's a guy that you know, he's going to have to beat you with deception. He's not going to beat you with the velocity. It's going to be a change of speeds, presenting pitches that look like strikes on their way to the plate, and then end up not being strikes when they're getting to the plate. And he's a much different pitcher than he was when he came up with the Dodgers, where he had a little more zip on his mm -hmm. fastball. I mean, the one fastball in the inning that I recall did hit 90. Yeah, he has the ability to change speeds with his fastball, which is good. It's it's like having another, another pitch. But it's all about location and deception. Out towards center field, Maven ventures back just a step. Now he comes in. That ball was hit down toward the handle with Chase Utley at the plate. And there's one away. And Marlon Bird's coming up. It's a 259 hitter on the year. 38 RBIs are second to Ryan Howard, who leads the team with 41. Marlon struck out four times in last night's ball game. Struck out four times last night, had four RBIs the night before. The Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant. Is Colleen Cerveni of Williamstown, New Jersey? Well, he's hit a home run in today's ball game, and Colleen will win $100. And by the way, congratulations to Tina Mikowski of Conshohocken. She won $100 last night on Reed Brignac's walk-off home run. Balls one strike to Marlon Bird. There's Reed. He hit a walk off here on the bench today. Just the way the matchups worked out lefty on lefty. Saving him for late inning heroics. Out toward right center field. That was a hanger. And it's going to hang up there for Maven to make the catch. And back to first goes Rollins, two away. John Mayberry's coming up. As it turns out, the Phillies, because the Washington Nationals won last night. Are still seven and a half games back in the National League East. The Nationals have found themselves now atop the division. They've won four straight and eight of ten. Only the Nationals and the Phillies won last night. So the Phillies are a game behind the Mets, who are in fourth place. Balls hit out towards center. Seems to be where balls go to die, at least in this inning. Three opportunities for Cameron Mabin. And the side is retired. The Phillies do get a run back at an RBI single by Jimmy Rollins. Well, things are brightening up a little bit out at Center City, at least. It's a 2 1 game.
1960s retro night tomorrow at the ballpark. And then Sunday, Chevrolet Father's Appreciation Day. All men 15 and older will receive that fedora right there. Tickets can be purchased by going to phillies.com. Yes, Monty Grandal will lead it off for the Padres. He takes outside. It's one ball and no strikes. 183 hitter with five home runs. That one's out toward right center field. Bird on the run. It'll get there. It just seems like everything's hanging up for the outfielders, at least for the first inning and a half. What away. Amarista is coming to the plate. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murphy. All right, thanks a lot, Tom. Well, the Phils did a nice job in uh, cutting into that deficit, the early deficit that uh, Kyle Kendrick uh, was put them in. And, you know, they're going to have to continue to do that. You know, you look at the first two innings of Kyle starts over the year, and uh, that is where he's had the most trouble. He then seems to get stronger throughout the game. They'll hope that that pattern continues. But take a look at this, these trending numbers for uh, Kyle Kendrick. Line drives uh, in April just 22 percent against him but up to 31 percent in May and June extra base hits up as well to 36 percent. So obviously the uh, opposition is getting uh, good swings at Kyle uh, throughout the ball game, and that's something he's going to have to curtail and Jamie I would imagine uh, much like real estate. It's all about location 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 at that point. It is very much about location and Murph, it's interesting that you bring that up because. The pitches that are getting hit hard off of Kyle are the ones that are elevated over the plate the fat, the sinkers that are running back over to the middle of the plate. We saw that in the first inning with with uh, Venable in the first inning where he was ahead two strikes or a head head in account and he leaves a fastball up out over the plate and Venable just turns on it and leads off the game for a double. And that's what they would term right there a line drive the way that ball went to the outfield. Now those statistics that are provided by Bloomberg they do have folks that sit and watch every pitch of every game and they determine what's a line drive and what's not for a particular pitcher. It's pretty in depth. I think the staggering number though is the one that Murph had the, the second part of that graphic the percentage of hits that are extra base hits. Mm -hmm. I don't need to tell you this, Jimmy, but that's a big deal. Yeah, and for a pitcher like Kyle and Stoltz, you know, they're not overpowering, so they really have to rely on good movement and really good location. That's flared towards center. Revere coming on. He can't get it. He knocks it into the air, and it pops in front of him. Stoltz thought about going for two, but he'll hold up at first. Now, that would not be termed a line drive, I don't think. That was more of a bloop back towards center. Yes, it was. I think that ball was off the end of the bat and just short of Ben giving a great effort. But yeah, it's uh, you know, they had him played almost straight up, but it was just a little too short for Ben. And uh, you know, he was able to keep the ball somewhat in front of him and hold him to a single. Fourth hit for the Padres. Here's Venable. He had the first hit. You know what I've noticed from from Kyle. Oh wow. Well, no, that's what you call using your head, huh? That's exactly it, using your noggin. <laughs> now what I was about to say with with, with Kyle, it's it's about. You know, it seems like today, early in the count, he's making really good quality pitches, but as he gets deeper into the count, the ball's becoming slightly elevated, and I've seen this pattern with him. Uh, in, in several starts during the course of the year and it's a matter of keeping your focus and, and working down in the zone or trying to work out of the bottom of the zone or having balls look like strikes and run off the plate for chase pitches. One ball one strike to Venable. I think a lot of its execution. It really is. It's the consistency with the execution. I think his stuff is fine. Try to backdoor cutter. It didn't come all the way back. And it's two balls and two strikes to Venable. Well, Kyle, his execution has certainly been there for a good part of his career. 65 and 61 is his lifetime record. Another floater out toward left field. That'll drop in front of Brown. Well, two bloops in this inning. 
have given the Padres a little life with two men down here in the second. And Venables now two for two. Speaking of Kyle Kendrick, as we take a look at our Mazda leaders, Kyle is second only to Cole Hamels in wins here at Citizens Bank Park. You couldn't have stuck around long enough to get past Ryan Matson and Brett Myers. Uh, no, I couldn't. I would have liked to, but uh, just couldn't do that, Tom. Be hard to catch Cole Hamels. Doesn't matter who you are. Ever Cabrera takes outside. It's one and up. I think when people see Ryan Matson on that list, they're always surprised. Uh, he was a starting pitcher, though, and he was a two-inning guy a lot of times out of the bullpen before he settled into the setup role and then eventually the closer role. Two and zero. See our buddy Ron Wilson uh, putting the uh, poncho on behind home plate. The rain is picked up a little bit more. Ron is a seasoned veteran in that uh, Diamond Club area, so poncho has been no problem for him. Although he only has it on part of his his upper torso. Is, uh, Left arm is still exposed. I think another thing that uh, that has affected Kyle today is early, you know, first pitch strikes. He's, I think he's got four at this point uh, out of uh, 11 hitters, you know, which means he's going to be pitching behind in the count. 3-0 pitch in there for strike one. It's three and one. You know, and in days like today, you know, I, I'm sure people wonder, well, you, you know, it's going to rain. You know, you try to do things differently, or, or, you know, letting the rain affect how you're going to play. And I think, really, as a player, you really can't let that happen. You have to play the game, and you just have to deal with the elements. A line drive caught by Rollins out of shortstop, and the side is retired. No runs, two hits, two men left. We go to the bottom of the second here at Philadelphia. Padres two, Phillies one. Breaking news on all your Philly teams right from your smartphone. Download the free CSN Philly Sports app today. Padres two, Phillies one. This young lady's making some memories. Speaking of memories, it's time for our Geico quote of the day. And Ryan Sandberg talking about Cole Hamill's pitching last night. He's been real impressive, real good stuff. His changeup has been outstanding, and he's mixing curveballs. Just the way he's firing in the zone to both sides of the plate, you can tell he's on a big roll. Oh, he is. He's got a scoreless streak going now. He's only allowed one run in his last three outings. And he said all the right things last night, saying the most important part of the stat line is the W next to the team. But he pitched well enough that he should have gotten a victory last night. Well, and that happens sometimes as a starting pitcher. And, you know, you hear these guys talk about doing their job. Well, he surely did his job and then some. 
Dominic Brown leads off the second and takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. You know, and the good thing is, you know, his opponent was out there putting up zeros and he matched him with those zeros. Ground ball to second. And Marista throws out Brown. Dominic now 0 for his last 10. And that'll bring Will Nieves up. Nieves is hitless in his last 13 ABs. Trying to break that stretch here today. That's got to probably be a little frustrating for Dominic there. Stoltz uh, just jammed him with the changeup. And I think you know, he fooled him obviously, even though that ball was up a little bit. He just fooled him with the velocity, but I'm sure that ball ran in on Dominic, ran down the label of, of his bat down to the handle and, and jammed him. Aves takes low. It's one and zero. Aves is a 250 hitter with a home run and four RBIs. He does have three career hits against Stoltz. They've been spread out though over the years. Fly ball to shallow right. Venable had him played over that way. Well, two quick outs. It's time now for you to tweet your photo using hashtag Philly fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast. It's brought to you by AT&T. And now Cesar Hernandez who's hitting under 200 a 197 average. Of a home run and that home run home runs produces only RBI. You know, another thing is with the pitcher like Stoltz, you know, if you allow him to get settled in, it becomes a very difficult pitcher to face. And you know, when I mean settled in, you know, locating his fastball down and away, pushing you back off the plate with his fastball or cutter inside, being able to throw his change up at any time he wants, uh, getting ahead in the count. When you allow that to happen, it just gives him momentum and confidence. He does look like he's settling in a little bit here after that rough. Uh, well, the first two batters, he's retired five in a row. Four fly ball outs and a ground out. Two balls and two strikes to Hernandez. You want know, to get a believe Stoltz is not a guy that's just going to give in when he gets behind in the count throw a fastball down the middle. He's still going to be a pitcher and, and make good quality pitches with all of his pitches. Hernandez just looks at a fastball that comes right down the zone. That's the first strikeout for Stoltz, and he's retired his last six batters. So, two in the books here at Rady Philadelphia. We'll go to the third. Padres up by one. Jeep Stump the Fans trivia question. It's a good day for the fanatic to come out of this cove to get a little shower since it's been raining most of the day. Log on to Phillies.com, go to the fan section for all the information, and please submit your answer on the subject line. All right, Jamie, the question is who was the first player to enter the Baseball Hall of Fame 
as a member of the San Diego Padres. The answer will be revealed a little later on. Can you give me the era that he may have played in? Uh, your era. Oh boy, thanks. <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to tell you which part of your era. <laughs> But he played in the uh, 70s and 80s. Might have played in the 90s too. Maybe he didn't play in the 70s. Yes, he did. Seth Smith will lead it off. I've led you down a path of total confusion. Smith takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. I'm going to go out on a limb and say he was a position player. Uh, you are on the right limb. He is a position player. And a darn good one, too. And a darn big one. One ball and one strike to Smith. Smith reached on a fielder's choice and scored his only time up. That's in there for strike. It's one and two. A cutter from Kendrick. Kyle has struck out one so far. He's scattered five hits through the first two innings. Over towards uh, second base. It's a one hopper. And that'll bring Headley to the plate. So two to one Padres here in the third. Chase Headley, who had an RBI doubles last time up, is coming up. Murph, it's time for the Coors Light Cold Hard Facts. Well, it is indeed, Tom, and the Phil's looking to sweep the Padres here at home and uh, perhaps get something rolling, and they were able to do that last night, of course, because of Reed Brignac's uh, home run in the ninth, and that is the subject of our Coors Light Cold Hard Fact, brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. Last night, Reed Brignac became the first Philly to snap a 0-0 tie with a walk-off home run since Willie Montanez did it back in 1972 in Veteran Stadium. So it has been a long, long time since that has happened. Against Milt Pappas of the Cubs. Yes. When we were kids, we used to try to imitate Willie Montanez's little flip with the glove, you know, when he would catch a pop up and he flipped, up, flipped his hand that. down quickly. Yeah. He had a little flash to him. I remember being Willie Montanez. No balls and two strikes to Headley. And a call, strike three. Well, that cutter was right on the knees. Headley didn't think so, but he's been complaining a lot during the series. Well, there are two outs. Here you see a really good backdoor cutter, and if he's getting these pitches, he could, he could have a nice day. And that's and that's what we're talking about is down. Right? You can, you know, obviously, when Will catches that ball, it's past the plate, but you can tell that ball when he catches it is below the zone. But I think when it crossed the plate, it crossed right at the bottom of the zone. That one sailed a little low. Headley does not agree with that call. Side. Yonder Alonzo struck out on that change up his first time up. Laser beams out of the home plate umpire. Moment, Jamie, where you don't walk up to Chase Headley and say, Hey, how you doing? <laughs> ball looked like it slipped out of Kendrick's hand. That is three balls and one strike to Yonder Alonso. Again, you can look at at bats here as, as Kyle's been pitching today. The at bats he's had success and he's been ahead of, and the, the at bats where he struggled a little bit is where he's been behind in the count.
Change up and swung out and missed. So back to back strikeouts for Kendrick. He has a one, two, three, third inning. Four in a row retired by the Phillies pitcher. Maybe settling back in. The Phillies trail it by one. They'll come to bat at the bottom of the third. We can return. Lottery benefits older Pennsylvanians every day. Hi, Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals. Call 1 800 Jeff now for an appointment. And by Nissan. Get to your local Nissan store for the ride of your life and save big today. Well, the rain is uh, somewhat light. It's been light for this entire ball game. As Kyle Kendrick will lead it off. Kendrick is two for 24 on the season. He has not hit his stride as a as a hitter yet. I think it's because he's been going with the same stance the whole year. Usually he changes his stance as the season goes on. Ball three. Well, he's taking well in the set bat. He is. Making him work a little bit. Look, he's moved up on the plate too. How about that? Did he just do that now? Yes, he, he did. See if he stays there. Just took the walk. Eagle item right there. That's exactly right. Stoltz mad at himself, although Kendrick did give up a hit to Stoltz, so he's returned the favor here. On Friday, June 27th, the Phillies will begin a four game series, four games in three days, against the Atlanta Braves. Got a fireworks show on Friday and Saturday night after the ball game. Sunday, the 29th, all fans 14 and under receive the Rothman Institute Dominic Brown jersey. There's the jersey right there. Ben Revere will be the hitter. Ben doubled and scored the only run for the Phillies. That was back to the first. Bunts to the right side. It's a beautiful bunt because nobody's covering first, and Revere is safe at first base. Amarista is saying he got there in time, and so did the throw. Here comes Bud Black. Kendrick goes to second. Well, we know Kendrick will be at second, and we'll wait and see what they decide over at first base. Now, this is where both dugouts usually go to the phone. Let's take a look. Marista looks like he is there before the tag. So they'll review that one. Clint Fagan will come down with Tim Welke, the third base umpire. And if they see what we just saw, then this play will go against the Phillies and they'll have one out with a runner at second base. 
Revere was not bunting for sacrifice there. He was bunting for a base hit. If, if it didn't happen, then they'd settle for a runner at second. But it was a good bunt. It was a very good bunt. Loved the hustle. I thought it was a great idea. And it was a bang bang play. Marista has the ball. See, it, it did look by the other angle that he definitively had the bag ahead of Revere. And that's a tough play for him, Marista, coming from close to this, from the second base bag all the way over on the move, trying to find the bag, find the ball, touch the bag with a speedy base runner and base Revere come, or Ben Revere coming down the first base line. Yeah, now we're assuming up here, Jamie, by looking at this replay, that, that he's going to be out. Uh, but we've assumed this before on a couple of different occasions. And the call that was made was the call that stood because it wasn't because the replay was inconclusive. Now I think that Tim Welke listening to New York, they're going to tell him that they see that he was out at first, and here comes the signal. So sacrifice. We'll go 3 4 on that one. It's a 90 second review. That's the right call. Foot's on the bag for Amarista. The foot is not on the bag for Revere. Boy, the more you look at it, the more you realize it, it was pretty close. You're lucky they didn't collide, too. <laughs> they, almost, they almost banged knees together right there. I think what it is is that, you know, we, we so, so many times we look at the impact of the bag you know the foot on the bag and the foot recedes as right. it goes down. Uh, that's what made it even look closer. Rollins takes a strike it's 0 and 1 Rollins. Is one hit away from tying Mike Schmidt's franchise record he had a single his first time up. On a slick day we'll see if he can tie it here. Pops it up foul and at a plug. And it's 0 and 2. This is the look that decided it for him. This is the first one we looked at. And that's the one that we thought uh, was the deciding look. That's Mike Miller's camera that got that picture right there. Side one and two. And when you slow it up, it makes it even easier to redo it. Hendricks at second. He walked and was sacrificed up to second base. Just foul. I'm really impressed with uh, how well Stoltz uses his fastball and, and how he's able to move it around the zone. And here with Jimmy, in comparison to his first at bat, he got ahead of Jimmy, and then he elevated fastball up, then he went down and in. That ball was up and in. I'd be surprised to see him throw something soft here. Even though Jimmy got a hit on a soft pitch first at bat, he did throw it soft. Crafty left hander thinking along with the guy that wants to be a crafty <laughs> left hander. Well, and you know Jimmy realizes you know, he's got two strikes on him. He's trying to cover both sides of the plate, and right there with that changeup, he's just trying to protect, hoping that at some point here he's going to make a mistake on the plate and he can drive a ball through the, through the infield into, into the gap in the outfield. To score Kyle Kendrick. I think the one spot where Kyle might have a little trouble only because he's playing shallow is Venable and right. Other than that, he should be able to score. Now maybe just walked in a couple steps in center. Well, I also believe it's how hard they charge, you know, how hard the ball is hit versus how hard they're going to charge the ball. And the ball is dying in the grass because there's been so much rain. And it will be wet. These are all things that Mr. McCannon at third base is probably going through his head right now. Wave him home, Pete. Wave him home. There he is. 
Pete's having trouble with his glasses today with all the rain. Rollins lifts it toward left center. Maven started back. Now he comes in. And he'll make the catch for the second out. And then Chase Utley's coming up. Fly to center his first time up. And Stoltz out of his eight outs that he's recorded today, five of them have been with the fastball. And four have gone out to center field. Including the one by Utley, his first time up, he fly to center. Looked like Utley wanted to pull the trigger on that slider. He was his legs were getting all set. Just decided at the last moment not to do it. One ball and one strike. Utley fouls it away. It's one and two. These fans, some credit for sitting out in the rain because it's 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 been light. It's starting to pick up. It's a heavy mist. Yeah, but it's got to be annoying. A little dribbler in front of the plate. Stoltz off the mounds. And he throws Utley out, and the side is retired. So he works around the leadoff walk. Here in the third, no runs, no hits, one man left in scoring position. We'll go to the fourth inning. The Padres up by one. LM160 label maker for just $9.99. Available exclusively at WB Mason for the special $9.99 price during June only. Who but WB Mason? We go to the top of the fourth inning. Padres up two to one. Brian Sandberg and Steve Henderson chatting. Louise have uh, managed to. Couple hits against Eric Stoltz, but that's it. Tim Walke, who's on the left, he is the crew chief, the veteran, uh, was meeting with Mike Bookholder, the head groundskeeper for the Phillies, in between innings. And they were discussing, among other things, the weather. Because the rain has picked up 
here in Philadelphia. But this is the final time the Padres are in town. So the game is in the hands of the men in blue, or in this case, the men wearing black on the field. The Phillies do go out to San Diego later on this year. But they do everything they can to try to get this game to be an official ball game. Cameron Mabin will lead it off. And he bumps. Foul. And it doesn't rain a whole lot in San Diego, Tom. You sure about that? Especially during the baseball season. That is true. They don't have a tarp. They literally don't have a tarp at Petco. Today's ball game is also available in Spanish. Just use the SAP button on your television or change the language through the menu on your cable box. Well, going back to what Murph was talking about with Kyle with the line drives and the extra base hits. Um, which would lead to his ERA in the month of months of May and June being over a point higher uh, than at 4.84 versus in April he was at a 3.52. And you know these are they they might not seem like they're big things, but I think they really are big things because Kyle has to be so fine as a pitcher, and you know a, a one you know one point higher in ERA makes a big big, big difference. difference. Yeah. So we get a miss and a curveball. Four strikeouts for Kendrick. Three in a row. Well, there's one out here in the fourth. You know, the thing that that it does, Jamie, it's not only the, the ERA, but everything else. All of his other numbers are up too when, when it's you know when there's an increase like that. They are, Tom, and right there you saw a very good curveball where it went through the bottom of the zone and maybe again was in a, in a defensive situation and he swung over top of it. Here's Grandal. They'll take a cutter for a strike 0 and 1. Well, the other thing that's hurt Kyle a little bit this year, um, his walks are up a little bit. He's 3.1 per nine innings uh, versus last year in 2013, he was 2.3. His strikeouts are down at 1.69 per nine innings uh, versus last year, they were 2.34. Again, they're little things, but they're making a big difference. In, in what's happening in, in his season thus far. Well, you know better than I do, but that last pitch we just saw, that two seamer that ran back against the lefties, that has been seemingly the biggest culprit against left hander. That's why the numbers are up against left handers. That's his bread and butter versus the left hander. You know, once he can establish that, now he can throw that changeup away and it becomes a more effective pitch for Kyle. One ball and two strikes to Grandal. Check swing. Last couple of years, pitch usage, fastball down a little bit, change up up a little bit, cutter the same, and the slider at 5.9 percent. Yeah, and he, again, he really has to rely on his sinker. That's what sets everything up, and he's not using it quite as much because it hasn't been quite as effective, and he's been getting it up in the zone. Hernandez, the third baseman, backpedaling into foul territory, makes the grab, two outs. The stuff that we're talking about with Kyle Kendrick. He knows. He's trying to figure it out just as we're trying to figure it out along with him. Yeah, it's not that he's not aware of it. Now the kid works, he always has. Sometimes you just have to try to forget it, just really focus on execution of a pitch and just continually trying to work on that execution. Yeah, he's been good today, aside from the first inning. I mean, he's been right around the strike zone since that first inning. I think his splits were 12 and 2 in the first, but since then it's been totally different. To the right side, just past the diving John Mayberry. And a two out single for Amarista. That'll bring Stoltz to the plate here in the top of the fourth. Well, we can go back to his, his last inning. He had a 1 2 3 inning. Only one other time this season in the first inning is he had a one, two, three inning, which then leads to a 382 batting average against him and an ERA over nine in the first inning. So, I mean, if anybody just looked at numbers, they would realize that, yeah, this guy's really struggling in the first inning. And I know he knows that too. And I, you know, I, I'm not trying to belabor this, but, you know, it, I'm sure it's a concern of his and Bob's. 
you know, Bob McLaurin and, and Kyle, I'm sure, have chatted about it and conversed and, you know, given, I'm sure Kyle has had some feedback. I'm sure he's talked with the catchers. Um, but again, it's, you, know, you can talk all you want. You actually, you have to go out and do it. One ball, no strikes to Stoltz. Upstairs, 2 0. Got a piece of Nieve, said it's two and two. And the other part to this equation, we briefly talked about it early in the game, is getting quick outs. Early contact, getting quick outs. And, and that keeps pitch counts down, it keeps your your defense engaged into the game, and it, it, it also improves the pace of the game. Well, the other part of it. Which is on the other side of the docket. There have been games where he has pitched well and they just haven't scored for him. The Phillies have been shut out five times in his last 19 starts. They've scored one run or less in eight of his last 19 starts. But again, as you said yesterday, those are things you can't control. Exactly. As a pitcher, you've got to focus on what you can control. Your your part of the equation. If you get caught up in the rest, you know, it's it's going to get go from bad to worse. Two two pitch. Ground ball foul past Jose Valentin. Nice use of the hat there. It remains two balls, two strikes. Kendrick trying to get through this fourth inning and a 2 1 Padres lead. The other thing that I've found through research as well, Tom, is that Kyle's fastball velocity is averaging an 89. Where I think in the past he's been set a little bit, you know, 90, 91. You know, that previous pitch there was 90 miles an hour, but talking about the average velocity that he's been throwing. Runner goes, pitch is fouled away. And here, here's a great example. You, you get the pitcher at the plate. He's got an eight pitch at bat working right now. It's just looking like he has he doesn't have anything at this point that's gonna you know get Stoltz out in front, fool him. You know, he's gonna have to get him to chase something. Runner goes again and Stoltz a swing and a miss at a 91 mile an hour fastball. Five strikeouts for Kendrick in today's ball game. So no runs, one hit, one man left. It's a long inning for Kyle. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Oh, he's down by one.
local dealer today by AT&T, mobilizing your world. And by Toyota, where will Toyota take you? Visit buyatoyota.com to find out. Toyota, let's go places. Well, the grounds crew is trying to dry up the infield dirt. It's been raining for the last few innings here in Philadelphia. And they're trying to put some of that diamond dry down just to absorb some of the moisture. As Eric Stoltz finishes up his warm-up tosses, we'll go to the bottom of the fourth inning. And Ruben Amaro Jr. has been nice enough to join us up here in the booth. Ruben, you got an update on the weather? How's it going up uh, with the precipitation? Yeah. Uh, it's. I think it's going to start filling in. Um, we're going to try to get this thing in, though, because we, uh, frankly, San Diego's uh, travel issues and uh, and uh, our makeup dates are not very promising. So we're going to try to get this thing in. It's interesting. I mean, you have to deal with so many things. I mean, from a front office standpoint, but even on days like this, you, you got to think about the weather and whether we play these games or not. You know, once the game starts, it's really up to the umpires anyway. But uh, but I know uh, I know the umpires and, and everyone understands the situation, and it's not ideal weather. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have any control of this one. Well, Eric Stoltz will start at the bottom of the fourth. Marlon Bird will lead it off. It'll be Bird, Mayberry, and Dominic Brown. First pitch is a breaking ball that drops in at 0-1. Uh, Ruben, uh, Rhino has been updating everybody uh, on some of the injuries that the Phillies have had. Uh, Cody Ashey, um, Darren Ruff, Cliff Lee. Do you have any different updates on, let's say, Cliff Lee and what his progress is? No, I think Cliff, and I haven't talked to anybody today, but he was uh, supposed to go ahead and throw again today. Um, I haven't, uh, no news is good news as far as I'm concerned. I'll check in with uh, Scott Sheridan after the game uh, about Cliff, but he's getting giddy. Uh, he's getting a little anxious. <laughs> In fact, I think he took BP yesterday, so he's uh, he's starting to get, uh, get he's getting excited about uh, getting back on the field. But um, Darren Ruff, we uh, we did do a follow up MRI on him when he had that accident uh, sliding into the wall in, uh, in Lehigh Valley. He actually has a badly bruised uh, wrist, but on top of that, he's got a real small fracture in there, one of the small bones. I guess it was about two days ago. Uh, about three weeks from two days ago is when he should be back on the field and playing. Ooh. Very, very aggressive. Technically, he's still. Well, I guess his feet are outside uh, this, the seating I area. Think he's gonna, <laughs> I'm not sure if he's going to make it back into his seat. <laughs> what do you think? What's, a, what's the over under on that? Well, out of the bump. <laughs> Here we go. This is what Ruben termed aggressive, and that was aggressive. Look, he's trying to keep his foot on the railing. <laughs> Bird lines a single up the middle. So a leadoff single here in the fourth inning. Well, that's disappointing, obviously, for Darren Ruff that there's a little fraction because it obviously changes your plans for his DL stint, too. Yeah, I think um, the, what the, the, the diagnosis is not great, but I don't think the time frame is all that different uh, because it was still a uh, pretty bruised uh, wrist that he had. So uh, it's a really, really small fracture. And, and uh, um, as I said, uh, Dr. Colt doesn't feel that. Uh, He's our specialist here at the Rothman Institute at uh, Jefferson. He's, uh, uh, you know, we think the recovery time is going to be similar. That was unfortunate. I mean, we've had two guys have accidents down there on the, uh, have injuries down there in the left field line at Lehigh Valley. You know, Freddie Galvis was the other one. Yeah. And Freddie's actually uh, uh, pretty optimistic about the po possibility of getting Freddie back sometime in mid July, maybe even late July. Hmm. He's uh, coming along very well and, uh, we don't like to put time frames on these things, but uh, but he's progressing really well. His range of motion is pretty good on his left shoulder. Ruben, how would you assess your draft of this year? I mean, obviously we were very collegiate. Um, one of the reasons, that, uh, probably twofold. One, uh, it's very difficult to sign players after the second or third round who are coming out of high school. You just can't pay them enough, and and the slotting system is such that it's set up that uh, it makes it very difficult to kind of maneuver around as you once were able to do. Um, secondly, I mean, I think that uh, while some of these uh, drafts could be considered safe, I think that they also could be considered pretty fruitful in a short period of time. We'll see. Uh, oh. Obviously, Aaron Nola, uh, you know, he's now signed officially. We've, uh, you know, he's down in Clearwater, and he's going to start uh, getting into our program uh, today or tomorrow. And uh, we're excited about him. He's got a chance to move fairly quickly, depending on how. You know how he adjusts to being in professional baseball, but uh, good kid and uh, pretty aggressive pitcher. Hopefully, he can he can move through the ranks quickly. Looked like he was pretty excited about getting started too. As Mayberry lines one to left field, that one's going to go to the wall. Murd is on his right way to third base. 
Smith's throw goes to second, and the Phillies will have second and third with nobody outs. Let's hope the Phillies are mutters. Really? You see how that Marlon Byrd was using his mutter technique going around second because it was so slippery. That was a good swing by John Mayberry right there to put runners on second and third. I happen to have the, oh, right here. You see a, a very good swing. He fought a ball out that looked like it was down and in. Got the head of the belt at bat out and drove it down the left field corner and legged out a double. And Marlon hustled to third base. Guys in scoring position, nobody out. Padres up at Cedar Run here with nobody out. And runners on second and third. Four hits now for the Phillies as Dominic Brown is coming up. Dominic, 10 for his last 24 with runners in scoring position. Ruben, I had the really good fortune to see your third round pick, Aaron Miller. Mr. Mur no, not Aaron Miller. Aaron, uh, Aaron, Brown. Aaron, Brown, Aaron Brown, excuse Brown, me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, played numerous times with my son this That's spring. Right. And I think uh, you've got a very quality player. Uh, and it sounds like he's going to be play uh, be a position player here with the Phillies. Yeah, we're going to give him a shot. At we think he's more of a position player, at least at the outset. And uh, you know, we swing the bat a little bit. We'll see how it goes. Um, seems like a good kid, good competitor, and uh, obviously a pretty good athlete if he's uh, going both ways. So he's uh, he's a guy that uh, things don't work out. Excuse me, offensively that uh, perhaps they can uh, work out on the mound. But uh, we, we're taking him out as a hitter, and we'll see where he goes from there. Sacrifice fly for Dominic Brown. It's 2 2 ball game. Now the infield is in. Does your son have any uh, advice for us on, on it? Hmm. I don't know. I'll have to ask him. <laughs> well, you thought it, you thought position player, right, Jamie? Didn't you? I did from watching. I mean, he was a good pitcher, but I, I think he had so much value as a position player. Um, he can go get the ball. He's got a really good arm. You know, in, at the college level, he hit for power with those kind of frumpy bats that they use. Um, I, you know, I think I don't know how much experience he has with a wood bat in his hand, but he's a strong kid. He's very confident. It's it's uh, I don't want to say cocky, but he's a very confident player and likes to play the game of baseball. And I really enjoyed watching him the last two years. And he is a competitor on the mound too. No, it's, it was obviously as he competes and uh, likes to play, so it'll be good to to get him out there and get him going. And most of these guys, almost all the all ten of our guys at the, uh, the top ten rounds have agreed to contracts, uh, not officially signed all of them yet, as they have to go through some physicals and that sort of thing. But uh, we're moving that process along pretty quickly. That's a good sign. One ball and one strike to Will Nieves with a runner at third. Outside, two balls and one strike. Ruben, we just saw Dominic Brown with the sack fly. I know that he's been struggling. Average wise at the plate, we gave his numbers 10 for his last 24 with runners in scoring position. Uh, that's a bright spot for him yeah, even has, with his average. He has been dri driving in some runs. Uh, clearly, he doesn't have, hasn't been showing the, the kind of power uh, numbers that he's had in the past, but he's driven in some runs. It was his second or third on the team and in, in, uh, in RBI. But, um, you know, we're looking for more consistency from those guys, from all of them. Uh, you know, we've, it's been troublesome at third base just because we haven't been able to kind of fill the, that uh, that role that uh, Cody Assey, that hole that Cody Assey's left, and uh, he's actually getting better and he's about 100% right now, and uh, he'll start his rehab stint probably in Lakewood sometime tomorrow. Three-one pitch to base and he pulls that to shortstop. Here comes Mayberry. The throw is offline, but Mayberry is tagged out. And there are two outs. So he was going on contact there. 6 2 on the put out. And a fielder's choice for Nieves. And with two away, a runner at first. Boy, that play was inches away from getting away from the catcher, Grandal. A nice play going after that ball. Yeah, Cabrera's throw took him up the line a little bit. But he had enough time to recover there. and Give uh, John a little bit of a lane to slide and actually turned into a fairly easy play for him. Hernandez lines one out towards center field. Maben will lay back on it, makes the catch, and the side is retired. A run here in the fourth. They leave one. We'll go to the fifth. It's a 2 2 game, the Padres and the Phillies.
Fitting Kyle Kendrick back to work it was Jimmy Rollins who will get a chance to bat. Uh, the next inning for the Phillies one hit away Ruben from tying Mike Schmidt two away from establishing the franchise record and hits he's going to do it in less at bats uh, than Schmidt which yeah, is we remarkable. were checking out the fact Schmidt was in the booth yesterday when we were talking about it and uh, I think it's about a thousand difference in uh, in plate appearance yeah pretty amazing I mean, their batting averages aren't that different which is kind of weird. Well, and <laughs> it, it, quite understand it. But the the way he's, I mean, he's closing on it fast. I mean, this is what Jimmy, is. Jimmy does with big moments. Yeah, no, it's uh, you know, Jimmy. We always talk about Jimmy being kind of a red light player. You know, he likes the he likes the spotlight. So it's uh, good to see him playing the way he's playing right now. Well, Venable will lead it off against Kyle Kendrick here at the top of the fifth inning. First pitch is over for a strike. It's 0-1. Venable so far is two for two with a run scored. Kyle settled down since that first inning. I know we've talked about it. The troubles he's had in the first inning. Yeah, it's a bugaboo for him, and uh, I think they made a very ill-advised pitch on the inside part of the plate, uh, trying to challenge it. Uh, Headley, I would think that was a poor pitch selection, but uh, you know you got to live with it and try to battle through it. Oh, and you know you can talk about poor pitch selection, but it's also execution. Yeah, you know it, it, it's. Yeah, he wanted to get in on there. He didn't get quite in in enough. Uh, he tried to get one of those front door sinkers. Uh, and it didn't fool him enough to freeze him, and then he stayed on it pretty good. Well, one ball and two strikes to Venable. Ruben, with all the the things that have happened this year from a win loss standpoint, a 27 and 36. Uh, what are some of the things that you're you're optimistic about, and some of the things that you're concerned about with with the ball club? Well, it's pretty clear that um, that our bullpen kids have, have really come around. I mean, I really like what Hollins has done, and obviously Deakman's been throwing the ball very well and a lot more confidently. Uh, DeFreitas worked on some of the things he really needed to work on, and, and as the throwing more strikes and being more aggressive in the strike zone, um, it's good to see him come back and, and uh, have some success. But uh, but I've been pretty pleased by that. Pretty good pitch right there. Yep. That's the pitch that you were talking about against Headley, which he didn't get in enough, and it looked like that one was right on the inside part of the plate. Um, you know, as far as our uh, the the overall the rest of the club, I mean, it's our offense. I mean, frankly, we're not getting the clutch hits and the timely hits that are necessary to drive in and to get multiple runs in innings. Uh, yesterday, uh, this last inning was a perfect example. Second and third, nobody out. We should come up with two runs, not just one. And uh, we got to put some crooked numbers up, and and we just haven't had the clutch RBIs uh, that that are necessary to win baseball games. I mean, you win baseball games. The pitching defense and timely hitting and the timely hitting we just absolutely have not had. Uh, the other thing that's been a concern for me is our overall walks. We're just not throwing enough strikes. Uh, both our starters and our relievers. It was good to see AJ get back and throw more strikes. He went through a slump there for a while where he just was not throwing enough strikes. Cabrera shows bunt, bunts out and misses, and it's 0 1. And we just have, we can't afford to, to have extra uh, runners on base uh, without. You know, giving our defense a chance to make plays. You know, so uh, you know, anytime you have walks, uh, either leading off the inning, which has been a bugaboo, or or the two out walk, that's been trouble for us. Just can't happen if you want to win. Well, uh, the bullpen uh, had Ken Giles at it the other day. Uh, what are you looking forward to for him when he comes up here? Yeah, when you know, a game, when, when he gets a chance to, to pitch, you know, we've uh, we've been looking for spots for. <laughs> I know Max been trying to look for spots, uh, and Rhino. Uh, for him to get into a game, uh, to not have to come into a game when the, when the game's on the line necessarily, but uh, at some point he may very well have to. But uh, I'm looking forward to see. He's a good kid with a good demeanor, and uh, he'll be nervous his first several outings out, I'm sure. But uh, but I know he's chomping at the bit to try to pitch. There's a tapper over the mound. Tough play for Utley, and in time. That guy has not slowed down this year at all. No, no, those are the kind of things that uh, uh, that make you happy about uh, watching the club. Is uh, you know guys like Chooch and Ut and, uh, and and Birdie. Those guys are they still busted every day. Those older players, um, they're still giving it their effort, and uh, it's nice to see that. Jimmy, Jimmy as well. Jimmy's played a pretty good brand of baseball, and uh, and uh, you know I, I I know that these guys have a lot more uh, a lot of pride, and they're we're hopeful that some of the some of the adjunct players and some of the uh, so other guys there will, will help us out and give us give us some opportunities to win more games. How about some of your prospects that are 
in the minor leagues. What, how are you seeing some of these guys per, per coming along and progressing? Yeah, you know, we, we had uh, very high hopes, and we still do, with uh, Michael Franco. He's got a, off to a slow start. He's really, uh, more than anything else, he's just trying to hit home runs. He saw the opportunity that, that has arisen now that Ashy's not playing and hurt. Um, he's just been trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark, and he's got to stay with himself and, and do what's uh, what, what comes more naturally to him, and that's driving the ball through the middle of the field. And he goes and fits and starts with that, but um, but he absolutely needs to to go back to doing that consistently. We're working on that with him. Uh, we have kid Cam Perkins is, is uh, bounced up to uh, AAA now, and he's a guy who puts the bat on the ball pretty consistently. He's done a nice job in the corners and the outfield. He'll uh, hopefully he'll start banging on the door here. Um, he's swinging the bat fairly well in Lehigh Valley. Hopefully he continues to do that and, and pushes some people here at the big league level. One two is hit toward first knocked down by Mayberry he finds it flips to Kendrick and the side is retired. Ruben we appreciate it buddy. Absolutely. What do you think of our Tommy Absolutely. Bahamas today you like these? Very attractive. Thank you very much. Very nice. Ruben Amaro the assistant GM of the Phils joining us up here in the booth. We'll be back with the bottom of the fifth inning right after this from Citizens Bank Park. Retro night here at Citizens Bank Park. There'll be a whole bunch of retro characters like Batman and Robin. Maybe the Pan Am flight attendants who will be in attendance for that ball game. Phillies will take on the Cubs beginning at 7:05. Muhammad Ali may even be here. It's 1964, uh, 1960s retro night. The 64 alums will be on hand as well. You can order your tickets now by going to Phillies.com. Clint Eastwood making a, an appearance here at the ballpark. Thurston Howe the third to the right of uh, Robin and of course Sid Fabian Sid Fabian will be performing uh, here at Citizens Bank Park he'll be part of uh, uh, the activities out in Ashburn Alley I don't know if you know much about Sid Fabian Jamie but he's the son of a wedding singer he grew up listening to melodious songs of Nat King Cole from his family's Magnavox stereo hmm. native of Bucks County and Sid who will be performing as we said here at Citizens Bank Park tomorrow as part of the 60s retro night uh, has been part of uh, uh, two bands before settling in with the uh, alphabets and also the Chez Odets. Uh, the first band was called Bad Prescription which is a Bon Jovi cover band and the second one is the Stop Stops. It's a Go Go's cover band. I don't know how that transitions to 60s retro night. <laughs> But somehow I'm sure he'll make it work. Three and one to Kyle Kendrick. That oh, was nice of uh, Philly's general manager Ruben Amaro to join us up here in the booth, chat a little bit about what's going on with the ball club. Three and two to Kendrick. Ruben has been pretty uh, open about the flaws of the club over the last few weeks and what he wants to see happen differently uh, for the Phillies. Kendrick is down on strikes and there's one out here in the fifth. So 
the other groups that you might see here on Retro Night. <laughs> Look at Matt with hair. That is a throwback with me. It's a pretty good head of hair going on there. Scary. We will not be performing, but we will be here. See, that's what we probably could have worn tomorrow. Yeah. Although it's going to be 80 degrees. Say it would have been a little warm. Speaking of warm, worn and warm. Worn and warm. Ben Revere takes a strike on the inside corner. I appreciate that effort, but I don't think that would have worked, Tom. With the turtlenecks? Yeah. It still may have to happen. We're running out of time. With a low one and one to Revere. Revere doubled his first time up and scored, sacked his last time. Bottom of the fifth inning, it's a 2 2 game. Chopper right side and ooh, a sliding play from Amarista and he dropped the ball. I would think they'll score that a hit. And that means Revere is two for two. Ben hits the ball fairly hard. Amarista goes to his left and just can't get a handle on it. After he catches it, catches it kind of out towards the end of his glove, and goes to get up and just doesn't make the transfer. Looking, you know, he realizes Ben's got great speed, and I think he picked his head up to check out where Ben was and couldn't make the transfer. Well, that's why they called it a hit for Revere. So he's on first. Rollins is the batter. Rollins hits one out towards shallow center, playable for Maven. Thought maybe he'd give Revere a chance to try to swipe a bag, but. He saw a pitch that he wanted, and there are two outs. Other folks that you might see here on Retro, oh, poor Murph. Instead of the Pink Panther, the Greg Murphy. Murphy, getting a look at this by chance? Are you in a spot where you see this? Uh, unfortunately, I am, yeah. Looks like an uncle of yours or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've never worked the stash before. I was but, thinking, uh, I was wondering if you had. You're saying that you have worn that hat? <laughs> I have worn that hat, yeah. My drive to center. It's funny, it resembles Murph, but it really doesn't, like, it, it looks like a different person. I know it's him, Photoshop, but it looks like a totally different person. He looks way older in this picture, I think. I think it's the mustache. I think people have too much time on their hands. That's what I think. <laughs> well, you can go out and solve some uh, solve some mysteries at some point. Two outs, runners on first and second. Marlon Bird is the batter. Marlon is one for two. He singled and scored his last time. Takes a breaking ball and it's 0 and 1. Ground ball toward the hole, picked up on the backhand by Cabrera, and he throws to third to force out Ben Revere. Headley hangs on to the bag and the side is retired. They do not hold the defense, so the Phillies will not ask for a replay. That's a heck of a play by Everett Cabrera. We'll take a look as we go to break. The shortstop for the Padres decides his only play was to third, and Headley did indeed hang on to the bag.
the week is swinging a hot bat and delivering for his team's offense when it's needed. Carlos has been consistent in the lineup wherever that location may be each day. In addition to his offense, his defense continues to be there when called upon, handling the pitchers and handling whatever comes his way. He takes a beating and comes back stronger each time. And his resiliency is brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Carlos has certainly improved his throws out to second base over the last couple weeks, and that's all part of the success the Phillies have had trying to uh, get base runners who are trying to steal. Well, and the Aves is doing the catching today. We begin the sixth inning. Chase Headley will lead it off at a 2 2 game. And it's over for a strike. One ball and one strike. Headley has an RBI double today. In fact, his double scored two. He got one RBI because they gave an error to Marlon Bird to allow the second one to score. And it's one ball and two strikes to Kendrick. Two and two. Well, and since the first inning, Kyle's really kind of settled into the game, and we've seen this has kind of been his MO for the season. But it's you know nice to again see him settle back in after the rough first inning. At least stays alive. It was remarkable though. I mean I know that you've talked about this over and over again where you had problems at one point in your career with the first inning of games. Uh, Kyle never really had these kind of problems before. But I guess when it happens once twice three times it starts to creep into your head. It doesn't matter how old you are. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and it, you really have no defense for it. How do you prepare for that? And I think a lot of it is, is having awareness to it and then you Trying to psychologically change things a little bit, or maybe change just how you go about your pitching in, in the beginning of the game. But obviously, you know, you're trying to establish a fastball. But maybe a particular game start with off-speed stuff. I, I don't know. I mean, it's it, it becomes an individual thing. Another foul ball off to the left, where a gentleman just made a heck of a catch on the last one. I do know that I did tinker with things, and for me. And we've talked about this where I tried to go in my pregame bullpen pitch the first inning of the game as if the hitter was in the bullpen with me. And tried to trick myself that when I came out on the mound and really the first inning it was really the second inning. And then did that eventually get you into the right mode. Believe it or not. Yes. Two ball or three balls, two strikes to Chase Headley. And it, you know, it's quite orthodox, but it eventually did work for me. Ninth pitch of the at bat coming to Headley. Fouls another one back. I think I said orthodox, unorthodox. Unorthodox. You knew what I meant. I did. I knew exactly where you were going. Feels like it's getting warmer. Does it not to you? Uh, yeah, there's there's very little breeze, and the humidity's picking up, which hence is leading to a little extra rain. Rain's picking up too, and a line drive caught by Rollins, one out here in the sixth. Down to Alonzo's coming up. It's time now for the Jeep Stuff the Fans Trivia Quiz answer. All right, Gene, we were not able to bring in somebody to help you today. Who was the first player to enter the Baseball Hall of Fame as a Padre? Well, my questioning to you, I think you were able to help me a little bit. And, uh, this guy was a, a great athlete, not only in baseball, but other sports as well. Went to the University of Minnesota, played some basketball. Mr. David Winfield. I knew you weren't going to say Todd Zolecki from Phillies.com, but Dave Winfield is correct. Who also went to the University of Minnesota. It's starting to rain a little bit harder here. Yeah, it is. Well, that's what part of what we were told. We may never see them again. They'll be dry. Out of 
play. One ball and one strike to Yonder Alonso. Mid 70s here this afternoon. I guess you would have to do that from time to time if you had uh, hair. And it's one and two. Still beats a day at school. <laughs> in the dirt, and it's two and two. Well, as Ruben said, this game is in the hands of the umpires, so they're going to try to play as much, as long as they possibly can because it is a tie game. You can see in the infield where the water's starting to lay a little bit. Yeah. Especially in the back side of the infield. 100 pitches now for Kendrick. It's two balls and two strikes to Yonder Alonso. Got a chopper back over the mound. Kendrick can't get it. Rollins bare hands throws. Not in time. Heck of a try by Jimmy Rollins. And that'll be an infield hit. Ryan Sandberg is debating on whether to go up to chat with the first base umpire. Telling Kyle Kendrick to stay off the mound for a moment. It looked like he got there ahead of the throw. Great play though by Rollins. And I think he got there. Yep. Lifts it to right, playable for Bird. And one pitch, one one pitch, and Maben's retired. So two outs, and back to first goes Yonder Alonso. Well, just as we said, the rain had picked up. It has now slowed down a little bit. It's just going to be that kind of day for the rest of the afternoon. That shot has changed a handful of different times today down in Center City. Rondal is 0 for 2. Change up 0 and 2. Runner goes. Pitch is hit down the left field line. Long run. Hernandez into foul territory. He's there. And he makes the catch of the side. He's retired. Second time today that Grandal. Has flied out to the third baseman in foul territory. Middle of the sixth, John Mayberry will lead it off.
Com. By Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. And by WB Mason, you can't go wrong when you buy right. Bottom of the sixth inning, Padres two, Phillies two. Eric Stoltz is just getting on the mound now to warm up because the grounds crew was trying to throw some more of the diamond dry down, just as they're doing around the infield, trying to keep things as dry as possible at this point. Rain has uh, been heavy at times. And it's tapered off a little bit. Just has been a kind of a fine mist the entire day. It'll be Mayberry Brown and Nieves for the Phillies here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Antonio Bastardo is warming up in the bullpen for the Phillies. Padres have a right hander warming up. And the first pitch to Mayberry is taken outside 1 0. There's Bastardo. Kendrick is over 100 pitches. He's due to bat fifth in this inning. Outside 2 0. Mayberry doubled his last time up. He's 1 for 2. They have swung at ball three. It's three. It's two and one. Up till this point, the ball is just not jumping off the bats. I think the air is a little heavy, and the wind is blowing straight down again, Tom. <laughs> straight down. And when both of these pitchers are on, they're trying to miss the barrel of the bat. It turned out to be a rain-soaked afternoon. Stoltz is quietly throwing a, a really nice game. I bet you that coming in. He had allowed 10 earned runs in his last eight and a third, 18 earned runs in his last 19. Well, today he's allowed two. That's it, through five. He's got two walk, or excuse me, two strikeouts in one walk. And eight of his outs have been off the fastball. That one's lined out toward left field. On the run is Smith. He reaches up, it's over his head. And it'll be the second double of the game for John Mayberry. It's his sixth of the year. The Phillies have the go ahead run over third with Dominic Brown coming up. Of course, that ball didn't jump out of the park, but he gave it a pretty good run. Yeah, it was a good fastball down, and John just stayed with it. Went down to get it. Looked like he was looking. Uh, the ball was uh, supposed to be down and away. And it, Crept over the middle of the plate. John just stayed right with it and put a nice swing on it. I'm going to try to get that runner over. He hits a foul into the Phillies dugout. He had a sack fly his last time up. He grounded the second his first time. Ruben mentioned just a few minutes ago when he was on the clutch base hit to the Phillies have been in need of time and time again. So you had a major league scoreboard there in the bottom of the eighth inning in Cincinnati. Dodgers lead the or excuse me, the Reds lead the Dodgers two to one. Todd Frazier has a two run home run. Actually, it's now three to one in favor of the Reds. They've just added another run in their half of the eighth. And that one is floated into right field a base hit. Mayberry's going to stop at third. He had to hold up to make sure that ball wasn't going to be caught. So a single for Dominic Brown first and third with nobody out here in the sixth inning. And here comes Bud Black. Dominic gets a cutter out over the plate. 
just out of the reach of first baseman. And Mayberry, he actually kind of had a hold up there to make sure that that ball got past the first baseman, got through the infield. That's why he really didn't get a, that great of a jump. Well, it looks like it's going to be a double switch for Bud Black. Kirsten Norfee is going to come in to play the outfield. And the right hitter Dale Thayer is coming in from the bullpen. So a pitching change and a position change for San Diego. Where the bottom of the sixth inning the Phillies have runners on first and third with nobody out. Smartphone or tablet are perfect for Father's Day. Dad will have access to features such as live look-ins, instant replay, live audio, free MLB.tv game of the day, and much more. For more details, visit MLB.com. All right, so the Phils have a little threat going here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Eric Stoltz's day is done. He'll leave with the two runners on the corners being his responsibility. And Dale Thayer will be the new pitcher for... The San Diego Padres there in his 31st game. He's closed at times for San Diego in recent years. He's got a little sparky Lyle mustache going there. Of sorts. Well the Aves is the batter with two runners on. Infield is a double play depth. Kristen Orfia, who's now in right field, will bat ninth, so he's due up second for the Padres in the top of the seventh inning. Well, it looks like Thayer's got a little life on his fastball. He's got a low to mid 90s fastball with a slider that's low to mid 80s. And the changeup is really odd. It's mid to uh, like 83 to 86. Chopper to third. Headley's got it. He's coming home. His throw is high. Mayberry is out at the plates. And Ryan Sandberg's coming out. Mayberry looked like his, his feet got caught in the mud and slowed up as he came to the plate. There'll be runners on first and second with one out. Todd Tischner, the home plate umpire, is saying that the tag was made before Mayberry got to the plates. Mm. I, I think the foot the foot popped up, but they are going to review it. Now there was so much dirt on the plate, I think it's going to be difficult for the umpires to see. Grandal's foot slowed up Mayberry. See, I don't know if his back foot hit the edge of the plate before he was tagged though. Tishner was right on it. So they will review this one here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Watch it again. You see what I'm saying Jamie Grandel's foot yep. right there on his yep. foot. I don't know if it ever hit the plate. I don't believe it did. Not from that angle. 
Yeah, I think the glove hit him before the back foot came in and hit the plate. And I don't think that lead foot hit the plate. Well, it's up to New York right now as the uh, umpires, Todd Tishner and the crew chief, Tim Welke, are talking to New York and they're looking at these replays. And coming into the week, there have been 468 plays reviewed. 217 of those plays have been overturned. Six were record keeping, or six have been during the course of the year. The average time is under two minutes, which is what they had hoped is that it would continue to go under two minutes. Yeah, it, it did seem like Mayberry's foot popped up and never did reach the plate. We've looked at it three different times, and I don't know if the umpires in New York. I don't know. It's tough to tell. Mayberry reacted almost immediately. Watch here. Did the tip of his foot? Well, they're taking the headphones off down on the field, so they're going to decide, and he is out at home plate. So Tim Welke confirms the call by the home plate umpire. So 5 2 on the put out runners on first and seconds. With one man down. All right Jamie another thought on that if you're the runner at third is that. You're going home because you're trying to avoid a double play. On a play like that. Now you could hold if you choose to but in theory. The thought is to avoid them throwing it around the horn although they wouldn't have gotten a double. I play don't on think that there one. was a double play in order right there. And it, there's no way conceivable there was a double play. So he's you're, going still, on you're, you're forcing he's going on contact you're forcing the defense to make a play on you. Yeah. And you still have uh, a guy at, at second base in scoring position and now we have Brian Howard coming up to uh, to pinch hit for uh, Cesar Hernandez. So Nieves is at first base and Dominic Brown's at second. Ryan Howard will pinch it for Cesar Hernandez with one man down here in the bottom of the sixth. And Howard takes up high. It's 1 0. Well, give some credit to Grandal, too, because that throw was not a good one from Headley. And because Mayberry slid right at the plate. Uh, he was able to get his foot down to slow him up enough to force the pop up of the foot and apply the tag. If he had slid to the top of the plate, he would have been safe. Oh, and as you saw that play evolve off the bat, where Headley had to go to his right, you knew that it might be a tough throw to home yeah. plate. So you have to give Chase Headley some credit there for making a good throw and Grandall for staying with the throw and, and being able to somehow. Block, I don't want to say block the plate, but slow John Mayberry down a little bit. One ball and two strikes to Howard. That was the last tough pitch. Howard fouls back the 93 mile an hour fastball and it remains one and two. Phillies two, Padres two here in a rainy bottom of the sixth inning at Citizens Bank Park. Bill's got the first two runners on. They had runners on first and third with nobody out. Now first and second with one out. Howard takes outside two and two. Fish after one pitch off the outside part of the plate, and then he got a called strike on a pitch toward the outside part. And he's still trying to get him to go that way. There's last night's hero, Reed Brignac.
player may have gotten away with the pitch right there. That 92 mile an hour fastball was right there for Howard. He fouled it off. He follows the previous pitch up with a, with a pretty good fastball right there, tailing away from Ryan. Ryan fouls it off the left hand left side. Time to reload. And again, Ryan's looking to drive that ball through the gap. Three balls, two strikes to Howard. And he stays alive, fouls it off. Battle right here. This will be the tenth, tenth pitch of the at bat. Pretty much all the pitches have been down and away. So he's tried one change up, mostly fastballs. Another fastball that's fouled away into the upper deck. One change up, one slider, and eight fastballs. So this will be the 11th pitch of this at bat. Well, he hasn't fooled them all with. What pitch he's throwing? He's throwing one fastball after another. Wonder if he goes with something a little different here with the count three and two. He does. He threw him a changeup and he fouled that one off. Well, if you're on the third base side in this at bat, there's a pretty good chance you're in the vicinity of a souvenir. At least in this at bat. Seven foul balls. This will be the 13th pitch of the at bat to Howard. Strikes is a pinch hitter, two outs. Well, he certainly got a lot of fastballs before that slider. Good slider right here after all those fastballs, breaking down out of the zone and right swung over top of it. Brignac who homered last night to give the Phils the victory up here with two outs and two on at the bottom of the sixth. So Kendrick's day is done. Kendrick did not do badly here today. Give the two runs in the first inning. That's it. Scattered seven hits over six innings of work. 2 0 to Brignac. Kyle struck out five.
And a line drive toward left center field. That's going to drop for a hit. It's going to go all the way to the wall. Brown will score. Here comes Davis sliding around third. He's heading home, and Brignac comes through again. Two-run opposite field double. It's a 4-2 Phillies lead. Reed really put himself into a good situation here again. He went from a 2-0 count to a 2-1 count. He took a really good swing in that 2-1 pitch. Worked him way, worked himself back into another fastball and probably realized that uh, Thayer was th going to throw him a fastball and just tried to stay with it and, and drove it through the left center field gap. Five RBIs the last two games for Reed Brignac. And here's Ben Revere. And Revere loops one out toward right. Denorfi is coming in. And he'll make the catch of the side is retired. Reed Brignac off the bench. The hero last night. Could he be the offensive hero again here today? He's at least given the Phils an opportunity. We'll go to the seventh inning. And it's a 4 2 ball game. Now for your local Honda dealers game summary. Diamond Dry has been a pretty good storyline for today's ball game. The Phillies just scored two in the bottom of the sixth inning on, an, on a pitch hit double by Reed Brignac. So the Phillies lead it four to two as we go to the top of the seventh inning and they'll go to the bullpen. Kyle Kendrick's afternoon is complete. Antonio Bastardo will come in his 29th game. He's three and three with an ERA of 3.45. Other changes for the Phillies. Reed Brignac stays in the game to play third base. And everything else is uh, the same for the Phillies. Amazing. You know, the rain, it's been consistent all day long. There's Brignac. Uh, but it's been sort of a light mist most of the day. But the infield has really, it's really been lathered up with some moisture. Yeah. They do a great job here. Mike Burkholder and his staff taking care of this field. and. Anytime there's any excess of water, they they have a handle on it. And make sure they have pallets of that diamond dry back underneath that they have it all ready for days like this. Well, they'll just try to get through the afternoon, an afternoon that's going to be filled with rain and has been for most of the day. These lucky fans are today's Citizen Seven. They will each receive a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Good banking is simple, clear, and personal, and that's helping you bank better. Citizens Bank, good banking is good citizenship. So there's going to be a little bit of a delay as they finish up trying to dry up some of that water uh, at shortstop and even around the second base bag. 
Então. Getting a little diamond dry right around the first base side. Jose Valentin jumping out of the way. Boy, it really did get muddy at a very rapid pace out there. Kind of saw it when Nieves was coming around the third base bag. He was coming around uh, so softly just so he didn't slip. The same thing with Bird earlier in the game going around second base. Uh, it's time now for the Major League Notebook. Murph, take it away, buddy. All right, thanks, Tom. Brought to you by Gwinnett Mercy University. It happened late last night on the West Coast, but the uh, Masahiro Tanaka show continues to impress. He allowed just a one-out, uh, two-run home run in the ninth, but uh, got the Yanks of the win against the Mariners last night. It, uh, is, he is the second 10-game winner in Major League Baseball, and the Yankees are now 11-2 in his starts. How about these numbers? 103 strikeouts, just 14 walks on the season for Tanaka. And the White Sox guys, Jose Abreu, he continues to do it as well. Again, in a late-night game last night, another home run. He went three for four, 19 home runs for the rookie, 50 RBIs for the Chicago White Sox, who are hanging around. They are 33 and 33 in large part due to his bat. Guys, back yeah, upstairs. Absolutely, Murphy. And a big reason is, is his bat. That, that race is as tight as the East was earlier this season. From top to bottom, the Central is separated by three and a half games. It is the, uh, the tightest race in baseball right now. All five are up for grabs, and that's why the Twins went out and got Kendrys Morales. How about what he did in his debut for Minnesota? Two hits, extra base hit, three RBIs. Well, when he's healthy, he's, he can be a very formidable hitter. He's got uh, a lot of power, and he's got a lot of experience as a hitter. Two balls and two strikes to Amarista. It'll be Amarista de Norfia in the top of the order. And a foul ball remains two at two. Amarista playing second base today. Well, it's the bullpen's game. Kyle Kendrick is the pitcher of record on the winning side right now. After six innings, he allowed two runs. Ball got a piece of Nieves. Apobato is getting his ritual, his routine underway. Up, Brignac, foul territory. And one away here in the seventh. And Kristen Orfield will bat for the first time. All right, Jamie, so this game will put to test those numbers that we put up about the bullpen uh, during the outset of today's ball game. They've been very good. They have evolved as the Phillies hoped they would evolve since the season began. And in a very short period of time, too. I mean, you've got a lot of youth out there that they have a lot of ability. I think they realize they have had, they have the ability, but now it's trying to piece that together and being consistent in getting major league hitters out. And I think they've learned very quickly how to deal with pitching at this level and, and the, what, how consistent you need to be when you're facing major league hitters. I think we all see that if the stuff is there, it's just them realizing and understanding it. they have the ability to get people out and trusting their stuff. A ball of two strikes. It's funny, the other night when Deekman hit 100 miles an hour after the game, I said that was pretty cool, and he said, Yeah, I hope it was true. You know, because the radar games vary, radar guns vary from place to place. I said, well, we had it at 100 on TV, and our our guns are a little different than the one that's on the field. You know, and it's it's usually right on. 
in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. And I think I thought he brought up a good point. Uh, Mike Sielski wrote a story about you know, the 100 mile an hour uh, pitch or pitchers. At least have Ken Giles potentially can throw 100. And Deepman kind of said you can't try to throw 100. Because if you do mechanically, and I'm sort of paraphrasing here, it's just not going to work. You just got to throw, and then if 100 comes out, 100 comes out. And usually, it's the, it's when you get to that 100, it's it's the easier effort when you're trying to make it happen. Like you said, it it, it usually you lose velocity because you have tense muscles. You're trying to force it to happen. Out toward right field, playable for Bird. Ball carried pretty well out toward the track. Two outs. Oh, two away. Will Venable is the scheduled hitter. Venable is two for three. What else you got about the hundred mile an hour pitch there, Murph? You got one in you? <laughs> yeah, I, I wish. You know, no, I was talking to Jake uh, the next day about that as well. And I thought the, maybe the best thing he said was, uh, you know, he had never done it before in a major league game. And uh, he said it may never happen again, but uh, it was fun to, to, to do that. But that's certainly not what I'm trying to do. He said it's more about getting guys out. And, um, you know, he's hit 99 before and uh, not had success, he said. And, uh, you know, so for him, that the bottom line is getting those guys out. And, uh, you know, he was talking about Giles, he said, who lives up at 100. And, can do it time and time again. Uh, he doesn't know if we'll ever see that again out of him, but uh, the situation was right. It worked, and he got the guys out, most importantly. I don't know how you hit 100, though. As a hitter, you know, when you talk about throwing 99 and, and having that not work, I think he's going to do it again. I think now that he's done it once, I think it's just going to happen. I believe it. And whether he does it or not, again, that lure of 100 miles an hour will follow him around the rest of his career. Oh, yeah. That one sit out towards left. It's steep but playable for Brown. Well, that'll do it for the seventh inning. Antonio Bastardo has a clean one, two, three inning and a tight ball game. Time to stretch here in Philadelphia. The Phillies lead it four to two over the Padres. that and they're working on the field again as they have been the last several innings as the rain continues to fall here at Citizens Bank Park Monday June 23rd the Phillies will start a four game series all four games are night games against the Miami Marlins the last game is the Xfinity fireworks show post game that's the first of three fireworks shows and oh yeah the series begins with the Hatfield dollar dog night on Monday June 23rd tickets can be purchased uh, by going to Phillies.com. All right, so we go to the bottom of the seventh. Alex Torres will be the new pitcher for the Padres. Torres, his first stint in this series. 
He's warmed up a couple times. He'll take over for Thayer. Thayer is charged with one earned run and one inning of work. He gave up the two run double to Reed Brignac. So now the lefty will face uh, Jimmy Rollins, Chase Utley, and Marlon Byrd. All right, Jimmy's coming up one hit away from tying Mike Schmidt's franchise record for hits. He has a hit today. It was an RBI single in the first. It does look like it's brightened a little bit out there, but it is still raining. And now the first pitch from Torres is in the dirt. Two and zero to Rollins. Last two times up, Rollins has flied out to center. Side and low ball four. Rollins is aboard to start the seventh. Phillies would love some insurance here. What Philly sports topic are you fired up about? Tweet at PST on CSN and Michael Barkan could discuss your tweet on Philly Sports Talk presented by Comcast Business weeknights at five on Comcast Sports Night. That's coming up a little later on. After the Phils wrap up this game with the Padres. Jay Sutley is one for three. He's fly to center. He's grounded out. He's singled. Well, Torres has thrown four uh, through four straight balls to Rollins and five overall. And now Darren Balsley's coming out, the pitching coach. He was having a little trouble with the spikes. Uh, one this inning get underway. He was knocking the mud out. For a team that doesn't score a whole lot of runs, this is an important inning for the Padres. They can't allow the Phillies to get too far ahead. Uh, when you look out in the Phillies bullpen, you see Jake Deakman warming up. Now you're thinking, okay, we we do have to hold the Phillies here and try to scratch something out here in the next two innings with six outs to go. Something soft to change up, and it's in there for first the first strike of the inning for Torres. And I like that he threw four fastballs. Three of those first four fastballs were up in the zone. You're trying to get him to get down in the zone, and to throw a changeup, you have to release the ball out in front of you a little bit further. Padres got Torres from the Tampa Bay Rays. He was part of Tampa Bay and the big leagues last year and in 2011. Last year, 39 games. He had an ERA under two, 1.71 in the American League. And his ERA is just barely over one this season. Inside, three and one of them. Marlon Bird, he's due up next. And there's ball four. So two on with nobody out for the Phillies, back to back walks. 
now Marlon Bird, who is one for three. Try to win three in a row. It used to be that they would do that three, four times a month. It doesn't happen as often anymore. It'd be nice to put that kind of run together. Last time they won three in a row, the 17th, 18th, and the 20th of May. Lead off first and second. Fly ball off to the right, and it's 0 2. Quackenbush is up and throwing in the bullpen. That's all you have to say. You know who we're talking about. Away and caught out of the air by Alonso. One away. A little looper. And that'll bring John Mayberry to the plate. As promised earlier in the game, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game. This one comes from Little Chase. That's right. You can follow Little Chase at uh, L I L C H A S E, the number 26. Tweet your photo to hashtag Philly fan photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Here's John Mayberry who has doubled twice. He's been thrown at the plate twice. All he's got to show for it is a really muddy uniform. Breaking ball and it's 0 and 1 to Mayberry. He's got to feel good the way he's swinging the bat though. He really does. He hit that ball his first double down the left field corner hit that ball hard. And uh, his last at bat he hit that ball hard to uh, left center field. Well the other thought too is that by getting this start here and you know, getting a couple of hits. And his three at bats it helps him as a pinch hitter where he's seven for 14 this year. As Torres turns back towards second. Strike. JB, want to send best wishes and get well wishes out to two of uh, the game day employer plays here at Citizens Bank Park. Don Overweiss and Ed Smith, both are recuperating in the hospital. We hope that they are back real soon and feeling a whole lot better. As Mayberry takes strike two, it's one and two. Game day staff here is unbelievable, particularly on days like this where there's a lot of extra work to be done to keep things rolling. And Ed is our director of gates, uh, which means that there's a lot of work to be done before the ball game, preparing those gates, whether it be for the giveaways or for the uh, ticket takers that are out there. And Don is one of our uh, supervisors of the hosts and hostesses around the ballpark. So we do hope that both are doing great. And we'll be back here and join Phillies baseball real soon. Low ball two, it's two and two. Two and two to John Mayberry. 
Newberry's hitting over 370 in his last 15 games. He fouls that at the plate. It remains two at two. Oh, and as a hitter, I think sometimes it's a little difficult facing a guy like this right now that doesn't have really any consistent command of one pitch. It's hard for you to look for a pitch. It's hard for you to look for a speed. You don't know if it's going to be. I mean, you have to be prepared to hit, but you don't know what you're going to get. So it, it makes it a little more difficult to hit. I guess they call this effectively wild. Anything helps on a day like this when it comes to the rain and keeping your head covered. His hat's a little small, I think. The ball is pulled deep down the left field line. It is gone. Three run home run for John Mayberry. It's a three extra base hit day for the Phillies' first baseman, and they now lead it seven to two. Here, John got a changeup that just hung in the middle of the plate. He had previously seen uh, three changeups in this at bat. Deposit left field hit that ball very well. Again, it didn't look like he could have had to swing real hard at it. He just got his foot back, his front foot down, and got himself in a good position to hit. And made a winner out of Colleen Cerveni of Williamstown. She just won $100 in the McDonald's home run jackpot thanks to John Mayberry. Mayberry now with that home run is his average up to 273. Raises his average 31 points today alone with his three hit day. Five home runs now for Mayberry. As Brown takes a strike, it's two and one. Two and two. Oh, this has got to feel good not only for John, but the offense, for the bullpen, for the coaching staff. You know, this game is far from over, but they have a nice lead, a nice little cushion that you know, they don't, they, you know you're not, at, not every pitch means something. To the right side, that ball's hit softly. Yonder Alonzo to the bag. And there are two outs. I think it's a good point. The fact that you know you're not concentrating on on just one pitch every single time. There's a little freedom now if you're working out of the bullpen, or if you're a starter in this case. You know, Kyle Kendrick is out, uh, but Kyle you know, was working for the deficit from the get-go. And now, as we said, he's the pitcher of record on the winning side. Seven runs is a lot of runs for Kyle to get. Here's Will Nieves. Nieves scored a run his last time. As Deepman continues to throw in the pen, he had been warming up. Two to Navies. Off the end of the bat, the Norfia backs up on it, and the side is retired. But the Phillies have scored five runs in the last two innings. Here in the seventh, they get a three run home run from John Mayberry. Mayberry, three extra base hits here this afternoon. This one was right down at his wheelhouse, and he pulled it down the left field line for a three run bomb. He's up by five.
Delaware Valley Honda dealer or shophonda.com. Buy McDonald's any size hot or iced coffee is just one dollar. McDonald's, I'm loving it. And buy the quality plus sports stores. Go further. We played seven innings here at Citizens Bank Park. The Phillies lead it seven to two. It'll be Jake Diekman who will come on to uh, pitch against the Padres and try to hold on to this five run lead. Phillies with seven runs on 10 base hits. So Diekman, a 4.85 earned run average. He's allowed four home runs this year. He's going to face Cabrera, Seth Smith, and Chase Headley. Those are the scheduled hitters. John Mayberg has had himself a heck of a day. He's playing first base for Ryan Howard. This afternoon, he's gotten four at bats. He has three extra base hits in those four at bats. It's got to feel good for Ryan Sandberg to be able to, to spell Ryan Howard and know that he can put John Mayberry in at first base and, and get some nice production out. Yeah, I think the Phillies over the last couple of innings, too, you heard uh, Ruben Amaro, the Phillies general manager, talk before about the lack of clutch hits on a consistent basis. Well, today the Phillies have had both ends of the spectrum where they've left some runners out there, but the last two innings have been able to get some clutch hits. So oh, with Reed Brignac again, you know, he's had two clutch hits and actually one last night and one previous against the Mets. And then today he gets a big hit for the Phillies, a big double to drive into, and then John Mayberry, you know, adding to that three run home run to that. It's got to be a good feeling, and again, it's it's all about building momentum here. Ball one strike. Break the ball outside. Mentioned the Phillies' last three game winning streak was a month ago, right around a month ago. A liner to right field, right at Marlon Bird. And there's one away. Well, they've had a couple of others during the course of the season, but. They haven't won more than three in a row here in 2014. Now Tommy Medico will pinch hit for Seth Smith. And it's 0 and 1. <laughs> 0 and 2. And Jake Diekman just keeps pounding the strike zone with fastballs. And that, that's exactly a, you know, for me that never gets old. And when you got a guy that can come in out of the bullpen and throw as hard as he does, you know, he can really set a tone for the back end of the game. Yeah, strike strikeouts are huge in the eighth and ninth innings of games. Maybe he swatted it up. He got it up there, but just a little too far. And it's one ball and two strikes. You know, with the guy throwing like this, it's a tall task for an opposing team to come in and you know, expect to put three, four, five hits together in an inning. Yeah, they may get one. They may even hit a home run from time to time, but to string it all together, that's a good point. And when you're down five. You, know, you realize it's going to take several hits you know, to reduce that gap. See, Medica's numbers numbers is a pinch hitter this year. Well, he just barely got a piece of that slider. That remains one and two.
He went back and kicked off some mud on the, the plate behind the mound. It's not easy tracking when you're out there and it's a muddy mound. Your shoes get heavy and you really find it, you know, you're used to your cleats digging in. Yeah, in some cases, your cleats are sliding at this point, but he does get Medica swinging on strike, so there's two outs here in the eighth inning. Time now for our Hyundai defensive play of the game. And for this one, we go over to Chase Headley at third. As John Mayberry is thrown out of the plate. At that point, it seemed like an oh no, here we go again kind of game. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a close play at the plate. It had to be reviewed. But, you know, again, with, with them recording that out, you know, it stayed at, at a 2 2 game. Brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers. Well, Mayberry certainly made up for it in his next couple of at bats. No balls in one strike. I think both the catcher, Will Nieves, and the home plate umpire, Todd Tishner, got mud in their eyes on that foul ball. Will asking Tucker, the bat boy, if he sees any dirt. <laughs> Tucker's the assistant trainer. I like that. <laughs> Tucker's going, I can't touch anything. I got a hand, my hands are full of pine tar yeah. from picking up these bats. Pine tar, mud, all that stuff. He's got young eyes, though, he can tell. Over to third, Brignac will charge. Headley doesn't run well. Brignac's throw in time. Side is retired. It's a 1 2 3 8 inning for Jake Deakman. Pretty good changeup by Deacon. He doesn't throw many changeups, if any at all. Perennially fantastic postgame fireworks shows at Citizens Bank Park. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, June 26th, 27th, and 28th. You can order tickets now by going to Phillies.com. Fireworks shows here at Citizens Bank Park are always good ones. Medica stays in the game to play left field for the Padres. And the new pitcher is left header Troy Patton. Who comes into a seventh game? Tony Gwynn Jr. will pitch it for Jake Diekman. It's like Mario Hollins will pitch the ninth inning for the Phillies. Tony Gwynn is uh, 0 for his last 17. So here he is to lead off the eighth. It'll be Gwynn, Brignac, and then the top of the order. Tony's numbers is a pinch hitter, two for 23. 
outside one and one. Somebody like Patton's always thrown this way. Like Deepman, we know that they tinkered with him and they changed his arm angle. I wonder at what point will they change a lefty's angle from, let's say, over the top of three quarters to be down even a little bit more? Well, I got to believe he might, he may have, you know, he may have been a starter at some point in his life or earlier in his career, high school, college, wherever it may be. And they found it. You now we're going to move you into the bullpen and become more of a specialist. And maybe by dropping down with that breaking ball, he's become a little more effective. Yeah. Particularly when that breaking ball sweeps into the strike zone. Over the years, you've seen many guys who've made this adjustment. Obviously, Deekman being uh, the most recent from a Phillies standpoint. I remember Pedro Feliciano, who pitched all those games against the Phillies and the Mets. He changed his delivery to be more of a you know, less than three quarter left handed specialist and was a real good one for a few years. Hard to change though. It is. And you've actually I've seen it with some right handed pitchers that were three quarter guys or maybe even uh, infielders outfielders with you know, that never really hit that well but had good arms you know, converted them into relief pitchers. That one's pulled down the right field line and out of play. And they may have them drop down a you know, sidearm or, or even a submarine guys. Away for Gwynn, not hit that far. And then Medico will make the catch. Tony had some really good swings in this at bat against the left hander, but is retired, and that'll bring Brignac to the plate. Brignac's two run double is really the difference of this ball game. The Phillies did add three more on a home run. Takes a breaking ball and it's 0 and 1. Three straight left handers for the Phils against the lefty Patton. Over to first base. And there are two outs. Ben Revere is up next. Murph, how tough has it been out there today with the way the rain's been falling and everything like that? Has it been, uh, I mean, I know it's been persistent, but if, you know, you've been out there a lot like the fans have. How tough has it been? Yeah, you know, you know it, it has been consistent, and at times it has been hard. I mean, right now it's uh, it's not too bad. It's, it's falling pretty lightly. But, uh, you know, I got to imagine just from a, from a playing standpoint that it's, it's just annoying. I, I would imagine that, you know, you got the water dripping off your, the brim of your hat when you're out in the field. And then, as you guys talked about, the mud uh, gathering in your cleats and stuff. But, you know, the fact that they were able to, to kind of power through and, and play in the rain was a good thing. Uh, and, yeah, give the fans some credit because a lot of them have, haven't moved out of their seats. They're just letting it fall right on them. And, and, uh, and they're just watching, watching the ball game. Yeah, more than 29,000 on hand today for this day game. As Murph said, a lot of them have stayed in their seats. Some have just recently gone underneath uh, but they've tried to power through as Murph said one ball one strike that one's out toward the middle of the diamond scooped up by Cabrera and he throws Revere out that's a fine play even with all the mud Revere still moves well up the line a one two three inning for the Padres they retire the fills in order we go to the ninth inning the fills in search of their third straight victory.
the ninth right now and the Phil's three more outs and trying to put this one in the win column and tomorrow they'll welcome the Chicago Cubs here to Citizens Bank for a three game series over the weekend take a look at the pitching matchup guys Jake Arrieta one and one with a two and a half ERA will take on Roberto Hernandez on Friday night then it's Edwin Jackson and David Buchanan getting the ball on Saturday and then on Saturday, uh, Sunday afternoon it'll be AJ Burnett and Travis Wood the lefty for the Chicago Cubs guys all right Burke we appreciate that Cubs come into this uh, ball game or come into the series uh, with a record of 26 and 37. Now Chicago is playing Pittsburgh tonight uh, the other side of the state so not too far of a, a road to go to get here to Philadelphia. Mario Hollins and not Ken Giles will pitch the ninth inning for the Phillies. Hollins one and one with a 2.91 ERA 19 strikeouts to 21 and two thirds. Hollins will face Yonder Alonso, a lefty, and then Rene Rivera's come out of the on deck circle. We still may see Giles in this inning because you have the lefty Alonso up here. Fouls the first one down the left field line. That'll be out of play. Dominic Brown hustling over to try to give it a look. But it's 0 1. I think you know, you know, Mario's getting a chance to get in this game to push a little dust off. Face a left handed hitter because that's what he's going to be asked to do in some tight situations. We got Kenny Giles probably behind him. Breaking ball and, it, and it's one and one. And what a great way, if that is the case, what a great way for him to break in with a little bit of elbow room and just go out and be himself. Absolutely. Get the butterflies out of the way. Out toward right field. It's not deep. Marlon Bird, a long way to go. It slices back to him, and he makes the catch. One out. Phillies bullpen is face seven, retired all seven. And Rene Rivera is going to be the pinch hitter. Well, they're going to stay with Hollins. With the right hander coming up. Rene Rivera is the backup catcher, so they still have Carlos Quinton on the bench and Peterson. One ball and no strikes to Rivera, who is the everyday catcher for the Padres. Down the right field line, slicing away from Bird. He's getting over there, and he makes the basket catch. Look pretty easy. Two outs. I haven't seen that basket catch from him in a while. Two away, and now the final out is what Hollins is in search of as Yasmani Grandal. And here comes Ryan Sandberg. How about this? How about this for easing the rookie right hander into the ball game? You're getting down toward the bottom of the order, and Sandberg walking slowly out. He's going to bring in Kenny Giles. So Hollins gets the two batters that he faces here in the ninth inning. And the easing in process will begin for Ken Giles. We've got a pitching change here at Citizens Bank Park. The Phillies on top seven to two. And Giles about to make his major league debut. We're we'll talking about the fans looking forward to somebody throwing here at the ballpark. Well, they are, have certainly been looking forward to this.
is making his major league debut. Born in Albuquerque, New Mexico, makes his home in Phoenix, Arizona. And after starting the season in Double A Reading, where he lit it up, he then went to Lehigh Valley. He didn't have as many strikeouts in Lehigh Valley as he had in uh, in Reading, but combined in 24 games this year, 12 saves and an ERA of 1.88. And as Kenny gets a chance to throw his first major league pitch. His parents were on the left there his dad trying to get every moment he possibly can and the rest of his family getting a chance to watch him make his major league debut and the first batter he'll face is Yasmani Grandal first pitch is in there for a strike and it's no balls and one strike 99 on the gun The radar gun here at Citizens Bank Park is a little different than ours. It read 100 miles an hour, so that's why the reaction from the crowd. Now the 0 1 pitch up high. And it's one ball and one strike. The crowd is uh, booing the radar gun, which read 98. It's all part of the, the show, the big show. Slips that it's two and one. All right, by coming in here today to try to get one out, does this calm him for the next outing? I don't know that it calms him. It just kind of, you know, it just kind of gives him that first opportunity. You know, and I think they just want to see how he reacts to this type of situation. I'm sure he'll be nervous for a while, and he should be. You, you, know, you never want to get comfortable here. Three balls and one strike. Alexi Amarista is the on deck batter. Giles last year in Clearwater struck out 34 and 25 and two thirds. Out toward left field. Brown going back. Warning track to the wall. Does he have room? And he jumps and it is gone. An opposite field home run for Yasmani Grandal. And it's now a seven to three ball game. Well, he had to give up his first major league home run eventually. So he's got his first batter out of the way. And now it's Amarista who will come up. Well, better now than coming in with a one run lead. Well, it's a fastball, it's elevated out over the plate. He supplied the power. It looked like he, he knew it almost immediately. For Grandal, that's his sixth home run. And Marista's one for three. And that's a strike. Four to one. That was pretty filthy. As we like to say on the bench. <laughs> or some people say that was dirty. It was an excellent slider. How about that? That was good. The 0 2. A pie. 1 and 2. Saved six games a year ago, 12 this year. And that one just missed. Two balls and two strikes. I know he's got some adrenaline pumped up now. You think? You know, he's not a big guy. He's six foot two. I shouldn't say he's not a big guy, but he runs 100 miles an hour. You don't teach that. He's ready. Uh, the 2 2 pitch to Amarista. Swing and a miss. He got him with a slider. His first strikeout of his big league career comes to wrap up a three game sweep for the Phillies as they win it 7 3 over the San Diego Padres.
Well, they wanted to ease him into it, and they certainly were able to do that here this afternoon. He did give up a solo home run, but then came back and threw very two very good sliders to get Amarista, who was pre preparing for that fastball that he couldn't hold up. This had some wicked movements. Uh, yeah, and an 89 mile an hour slider. Pretty phenomenal. I think we're going to see a lot of good things from Mr. Kenny Giles here in Philadelphia. So Giles all smiles after making his major league debut. And the Phillies all smiles after winning their third consecutive ball game. John Mayberry is our Chevrolet player of the game. Three extra base hits, three RBIs. Had himself a heck of a day coming off the bench. And that brings us to our W.B. Mason deliveries of the game. First of the sixth inning. This broke the 2 2 tie, Jamie. Yeah, again, Reed Brignac was in a great situation. 2 1 count. He stayed with a fastball that was running away from him and drove it through the left center field gap and gave the Phillies a two run lead. And then here you see a changeup left in the middle of the plate. John Mayberry previously saw a couple changeups in the at bat and drove it to left field for a three run home run. Give the Phillies a nice cushion. Well, a nice cushion, a good day for John Mayberry, who had two doubles at a home run. He's down with Murph. Murph. All right, thanks very much, Tom. Yeah, three extra base hits for this guy, yeah, the offensive star of the game. And, uh, you know, it seems like every time you've gotten your chance, whether it be in a pinch hitting role or in a, a spot start this year, you've been able to come through. How do you keep yourself sharp throughout a season when you're maybe not getting as many at bats as you want? Oh, you just have to, to stick by your routine, I think. I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, make sure you're getting your reps in the cage. Um, you know, treat batting practice, you know, like it's a game, and uh, you know, hopefully it translates over. Yeah, you get you get the start behind Kyle Kendrick today, who uh, you know had a bump in the in the first inning, but after that, uh, really seemed to strengthen throughout the game and pitch very well. And then you hand it over to a bullpen that's been very good, a complete team win uh, with everybody kind of contributing. Absolutely, I think that uh, you know Kyle set the tone. You know, after the the first inning, you know he settled in and you know really competed well and um, you know held them in check. And then you know we were able to tack on some runs at the end. Our bullpen our bullpen did a great job. So um, you know, like you said, it was pretty textbook. You know, John, it's a three-game win streak, which is a modest win streak, but uh, you've got to start somewhere. What does it mean for this club to, to put three together, sweep the team out, and, uh, and welcome another team back in at home? Uh, it's big for us. I think that, you know, this is definitely a game of momentum. And, uh, you know, for us to get three big ones like this, uh, you know, hopefully it carries over into the next series, and, you know, we can, uh, we can prolong this thing. All right, great job, John. Appreciate it. Guys, back upstairs. All right, Murph, we appreciate that. Stay away from him. He's going to get your new shirt all kinds of dirty because it, he was all over the mud here this afternoon, just as this ball was all over the mud as well from Giles to get Amarista his first major league strikeout. And Dad certainly enjoyed it.